let's see. I'll tell you something. I did. I made a mistake a couple of weeks ago and I was, I, we are um, involved with our church in like a leadership and pastoral role. And I was setting up childcare for an event and I've actually never, that's never been my role to bring in childcare for the event, but I volunteered. It was me. And I, I messed up. I did not have the right support. I had the one adult that was in there was swamped and she and the teenagers that were supposed to be helping or weren't helping her. And like, it was just a mess. And I left that event. It was actually our annual church celebration. So we're celebrating all of the, um, that's what we call our annual meeting, our annual, like official church meeting is a celebration. We were celebrating some huge wins and it was awesome. But I left that event feeling like I messed up because I had messed up the childcare on it. And it wasn't a really big deal, but it impacted at least one person's life significantly. She was pretty stressed for like two hours taking care of, I don't know how many kids, 25, 30 kids is a lot. Um, and as I was leaving, this thought came to my head, like, who are you to do this? Mm -hmm. And it was like an accusation that I should almost quit. And I was like, Whoa, hello. We don't, we don't need to go there, but sometimes whether it's the enemy or our inner critic just goes negative fast. Like you should quit. And I share that just as an example of like, what are we doing when we, we genuinely make a mistake? We have to own that mistake, but we don't have to let it be a story. Mm. Like that statement that came across my mind when I dropped that ball was a story and I can let it stick and attach to me. Like, who are you to be leading? And I can let that create a narrative and a pattern or um, assign something to that failure. Or I can say, okay, I learned something. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that again, but, um, I'm sure you talk about it a lot on your show, but when we make mistakes and when we make failures, we don't have to let that mean something else. It's yeah. 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 No, I totally agree. And I had a friend once tell me that, uh, he saw failure as just data. Um, and he's done a lot of really cool things and, uh, it really, it kind of struck me because it, it really is true. I think you have to have that mindset of going into something. And I love what you said about not letting it become a story. Um, I, I definitely, when I tell stories of failures to me, they're like lighthearted and funny and they're not these serious, even though they could be really serious subjects. Um, I try to make them lighthearted and, and really, I guess, emphasize the emotion on the lesson and not the failure, because it really is easy, like you said, uh, to go negative really quickly on yourself. And it, whoever's saying it, if it's yourself or it's someone else, uh, it just goes there really fast. So uh, I love what you said there. And I think it's really a, a good thing to work on. And it's almost something maybe you could flip in your mind when you when something happens and um, you fail in a moment or in a small or a big way. Uh, to just really compliment yourself for trying and like flip that emotion instead of thinking, yeah, maybe I shouldn't do that. Cause it's really, it happens to me too. Like I'll try something. I'm like, why did I even try that? And then, uh, you know, 30 minutes later, I'm like, oh yeah, because I wanted to try it and because it's okay. Uh, so I love that. I think it's really good. Really good mm-hmm. story. 